enough to we bless your name this morning we are grateful for the miracle of waking up we thank you and for what you will yet do father be glorified again in this place we glorify you and we glorify you again we are not tired of glorifying you and we trust O oh god that you will glorify yourself among us that the holy spirit will find room to express himself among us we thank you this morning we ask O oh god that you will open our eyes of understanding you will help us O oh god to understand the mysteries of the kingdom <coughs> excuse me it causes us to see cause us to know and cause us to hear you we thank you and we bless your name in jesus name and everyone say amen, amen. you may be seated it's good to be here thank you for the privilege to share the word of god this morning <coughs> excuse me hallelujah praise the lord you know i just uh, went back home thinking about some of the things we said yesterday and you caught to me uh, that um, even jeremiah himself when god said to him jeremiah jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying unto him, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, all right? Uh, I'd ordain you, sanctify you to be a prophet to the nation. Now, did you notice his reply? He said, Ah, Lord God, I am a child. That's his unbelief speaking. Which means God, <laughs> not the best person for this job. Can you make me a boy? And the next thing God will do is that God rebuked him. I said, do not say that you are a child. Hallelujah. Amen. What was God trying to show him? Which means don't stop what I'm about to do in your life. Because you can't stop me. See, God is all powerful. God, you know, many times we even say God can do and undo. Well, it is true in his own world. But when it comes to man's world, he can't. The Bible says that, um, you know, the men of old, they limited the Holy One of Israel. So God can be limited. In my life, I can limit him. By not believing what he has said. By simply doubting what he has said. Am I communicating? Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you, believe God's word. Even if you don't believe it to begin with, start saying it. Just start saying what God has said. Eventually, you come to the point where your faith will rise to meet up what God has said. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. All right, this morning, I want to focus on the theme of this meeting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then in the evening, I don't know, I just trust the Lord. So, let's go to scripture where we took the theme of this meeting from. And then we take time to, to teach. I trust God that I will be able to do a good job in this short session. If I can't, maybe in the evening I'll take it up. If I can't, maybe on Sunday I'll take it up. But I'm not too sure. Praise the Lord. All right. The theme of this meeting is treasures in earthen vessels. Treasures. Now, what treasure is interesting to me because treasure simply means where you keep what? Valuables. Or if you like, treasures could also be valuables. Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> we are talking about valuables hidden in earthen vessels. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to read from um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'll begin to read from verse 1 till verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'll read verse 1 to verse 7. If I have the time, maybe we have to see that. He said, therefore, seeing we have these ministries. So he's talking about a ministry, these ministry. What ministry is he referring to? Well, let's go to chapter 3 for purpose of understanding. <laughs> All right? Because he's talking about something. What is he talking about? To have that understanding, you will need to go back to chapter 3. Because chapter 4 and chapter 3 were written the same time. I'm sure you know Bibles have said here before that the scriptures were not written in chapters and verses. They were written as epistles. Paul, how many of you know the Holy Spirit doesn't write in chapter and verses? Amen? Amen. Now, how many of you also know that God doesn't talk in chapter and verses? <laughs> oh, if God were to speak in chapter and verses, we'll be confused. Praise the Lord. 
All right, so these scriptures were written epistle, the first and uh, second epistle of Paul. We call it theologians, call it the second epistle of Paul, but I try to understand it this way. Um, um, you know, the, the, the second epistle of the Holy Spirit to the church in Corinth. Because if you say Paul, there's a tendency for you, it blows your mind from seeing clearly that the Holy Spirit is the one who actually was writing or actually was talking. Okay? The Bible says they were inspired to do what? To write. So, Paul didn't on his own decide and say, okay, I think I want to write to this church in Corinth. Let me just write some things to them. No, 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 no. So, but if you, if you read it with the understanding that it was written by the Holy Spirit, then everything you read there will bless you because you will take it as the word of God to you. Am I communicating? All right, so in chapter 3, let's go to verse um, 16, maybe. If we read from verse 16 or uh, 15, that would be fine. Because in verse 16, verse chapter 3, Paul primarily was comparing <clears throat> the glory of the first uh, church, which means the church in the wilderness, the glory that the church in the wilderness experienced, and then the glory that we have as people who are now saved through Jesus Christ. And he was saying that glory was good. And that, that gl glory was excellent. Exceeding glory. He said, but this glory is referring to uh, the glory that uh, came by Jesus Christ. He said, that one is far, it exceeds far in glory than that of Moses. That even though Moses, with the glory of God that he experienced, um, that, um, you know, of course, when you study scripture, you find out that the Bible says when he encountered God, a time came when he went into the tabernacle, and then the Bible says God revealed himself to Moses, and then when Moses saw the glory of God, by the time he came out, his face shown like that of an angel so he had to cover his face from that day even though that glory diminished with time but unknown to the children of Israel in their mind when you read the law they imagine that throughout the life of Moses that the glory of God was shining it was his wife they should have asked <laughs> then the wife will have told them that mister oh hey guys the glory was not always there. The glory actually after a while, you know, fizzled away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, but it says, Paul writing says, when, 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 when the law is, re is read, in the mind of the Jewish people, they have it that high, that glory is still on the face of Moses. And he said that glory was done away with. How much more the glory that is in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So he went on talking about that. I wish I have all the time to share all that. But you can read all that for yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Now let me say one thing to you. Church is not where we can reveal everything about God to you in church. If you don't do your own search, you won't get it. So I encourage people church people to be Christians like the Christians in Berea, who will always go search. You see, you need to do study beyond what I have done. So the Holy Spirit adds to what so ever you have heard. Anytime you come to church, Pastor Fumi finished teaching on any of the pastors, finished teaching, you should go back and make it a, a Bible study, even if they don't say study the scripture. Just go back and look at it. Don't let it, am I communicating? Don't eat your rice and then you go and sleep. No, immediately you get home, eat your food. When you finish, if you need to rest, rest. Then wake up, you know, and then when you wake up, go back to that scripture and say, that's the only way that word won't leave you. Praise the Lord. How many of you were here last Sunday? You were here last Sunday? Okay, how many of you were here last Sunday? All right, good. Were you here last Sunday, sir? You were here last Sunday. Good. Can you remind me what was taught last Sunday? You still remember? Sorry, sir. Huh? You remember some. Okay, tell me the one you remember. What was the topic? I'm not hearing you, sir. You need to speak. No, you, I'm sure. I'm sure if you go to the stadium, you can shout louder than that. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. 
Yes, I remember more from um, the School of Word, which, um, which I think like a Sunday school, a Sunday school service, which taught us about um, savings. About? Savings. Savings. Okay. All right, thank you. Let me go to somebody else. Now, I know some of you are praying, Lord, don't let him ask me. You think God answers such prayer? <laughs> That's not a prayer that God answers. It's the devil that we answer that one. But the devil is not in this place, so there's nobody there. Okay? All right, my sister. Were you in church last Sunday? Okay, tell me. That's just how many days ago? Six days ago? Thereabout? What was the theme of the, what was the topic of the message? You still remember? Yes, sir. Okay, what is it? How to manifest God's glory. How to manifest God's glory. Okay, fine. Wonderful. I like that. How come you still remember it was how to manifest God's glory? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, let me stop there. Now, I, I just said that to make you understand that when we teach, you see, we can't do every job for you. We live in a time where Christians or some church people believe that if I can just listen to my pastor, I'll be okay. <laughs> you are joking. How many of you know that the challenges of the ancient times is still the challenges we face even now? The word of God is not only written. It wasn't easier for them. So don't think it's going to be easier now. You have to do what they did to get the same result. For example, God said to Joshua, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You will meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then what did he say? No. Then, what will happen? Thank you. Who will make your way prosperous? God? No, Joshua. You. Based on what? Is the same, the same recipe is still available. Anybody wants to succeed, <laughs> you just need to do these things. Joshua did it. He succeeded. He was able to bring the people into the land, divided the land for them. And you know, when you check the ministry of, of Joshua, Joshua to find it more difficult to bring those same people into the land. You know why? Because he didn't really have any spectacular thing as per miracle. No spectacular thing except maybe one or two. But yet Moses had more miracles, spectacular miracles, and yet the people, they didn't, he, couldn't make, he, didn't, he couldn't bring the people to the full land. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, so God had to tell Joshua what jo, I mean, Moses didn't know. He said, you want to succeed? Moses didn't ask me. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that God will not bug you until you ask him. Hallelujah. I was listening to, um, you know, a man called um, Kenneth E. Hagin, you know, of blessed memory now. And he said, <clears throat> the first time Jesus appeared to him, Jesus said to him, um, when you left your last church, you entered into the first phase of your ministry. And right now you are going to enter into, no, 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 no. Jesus said to him, uh, uh, you know, when you left your last church, you entered into the first phase of your ministry. Now, but... And then he says, now you are entering into the second phase of your ministry. All right? And then he said something to him. He said, many people live and die not entering into the first phase of their lives. And that's actually the reason why they die. And he's not just talking about preachers. Everybody. Every human being. Because everybody has phases. Because you are called to do something. And you know, when you discover what you are called to do and you stay with it, then those things, you know, act actually bring you great blessing. Now, but I said that because of what I want to say now. All right? Now, he said something very interesting that I, I want us to take note. He said that in his life, you know, he started out as um, a pastor. So he pastored churches. And while he was pastoring churches, he said, pastored church um, for about um, 15, well, maybe about uh, 12 years to begin with first. And then 15 years of, um, of what you call evangelistic ministry. So he said, when Jesus appeared to him, Jesus told him, I've been waiting for you to enter into your ministry. So he asked, Lord, what do you mean? I've been a pastor for 12 years. Now I'm doing field ministry. What do you mean? He said, really, in the real sense of it, you have actually not even started ministry. 
Are you with me? Now, he said when he heard that, he asked himself a serious question. Now, he actually said when he left the church, when he left pastoring, he just assumed, all right? Uh, God told him, I have not called you to be a pastor to begin with. So, he just assumed, well, if I'm not a pastor, maybe I'm an evangelist. Not asking the Lord. And he said the Lord didn't tell him, hey, guy, you are not a pastor. Since, you didn't, since he didn't ask the Lord, God also didn't tell him, hey, guy, you are not an evangelist. So he went into uh, the evangelistic ministry and was doing that. Then the Lord also came to him. He said after a while, things were tough. He wasn't finding things easy, so he began to pray. When he started praying and seeking God, then God told him, he said, well, um, you're actually in the wrong place. He said, Lord, what do you mean? But I asked you the first time. So why didn't you tell me where I should be? He said, because you didn't ask me. Now, so I said all that to make you understand that sometimes it's not everything that God will say to you. There are some things that you need to um, press into God to receive. If you don't, you won't get it. Do you understand me? Praise the Lord. All right, so it's important for us to know that. So let's come back to this scripture. Nevertheless, when each shall turn to the Lord. Let me begin from verse 14. I think verse 14 will be better for me. Thank you. But their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil on taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Which means we are not dealing with the law. In Christ, there is no law. We are not operating the law. So when somebody tries to bring the law into Christianity, into Christ, you break it. We operate grace. Grace does not mean that we don't obey God's word. Great doesn't mean there's license to sin. No. Because there's nobody who understands grace will want to break that law. But he's telling us that, you see, we don't operate in the law, okay? So he says, but there are minds. Next verse, please. Just give me the next verse. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, that's what I said earlier, uh, the veil is upon their hearts. So in their heart, they just believe that there's a veil. There's a covering. And there's a level to which we can't see God. So a, a typical Jewish person, an orthodox Jews, what we call uh, Judaism, they don't believe they can access God. There's, they always believe there's this veil. There's a, a, a limitation between them and God. But the Bible says when it comes to Jesus, that is taken away. So the next verse now, verse um, 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, what will happen? What veil? That limitation. Now we have access to God. Oh, hallelujah. Now there's no veil hindering us from coming to God. Am I communicating? Let me say this to you. That what Christ has done, to, done for us is that we have access to God. Hallelujah. The same way it was with Adam before he sinned. How many of you know that Adam was not afraid of God when God was coming? In fact, while God is coming or was coming, he was also meeting God. Until he sinned. Then he said, I had your footsteps. So we decided to, to hide. And God said, ah, am I hearing you clearly? Why are you hiding? You don't used to hide before. Why are you hiding? Did you eat of the fruit of the tree that I asked you not to eat? And instead of him accepting and saying yes, he said the woman. And then the woman said the serpent. And then the serpent said, <laughs> "Hallelujah! Praise the Lord." That was an opportunity for. Adam to have amended his ways. Well, I've just said, Lord, <laughs> I have sinned though. I, I ate it. But he said the woman, that's why the Bible says, Paul writing by the Spirit of God said, the woman was not deceived. I mean, the man was not deceived. It was the woman that was deceived. The woman was not deceived. I mean, sorry. The, the man was not deceived. The woman was deceived. So, uh, Eve was not was, was deceived, but Adam was not because he knew what he was going into. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating? That's not my subject. Okay, so nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, what shall happen? The veil shall be taken away. Next verse, please. Now the Lord. 
is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There's liberty. Now the Lord is who? The spirit. What is he saying? The Holy Spirit and Jesus is saying to you, wherever the Holy Spirit is, it's as good as Jesus is there. Wherever you find Jesus is as good as the Holy Spirit. So now the Lord is that spirit, which means the Lord is the Holy Spirit. And where the Holy Spirit is, or where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Next verse, please. But we all, now watch, with open face, beholding us in a glass, what? The glory of God. What are we beholding? The same glory he began to talk about from, you know, the very beginning, comparing the glory that we have in Christ to the glory uh, that Moses saw. And he's saying that glory that Moses saw faded away. In other words, that glory was inferior to the glory that we have in Jesus Christ. So when people pray and say, God, make me like Moses, you don't know what you are talking about. I used to pray like that when I was younger. So one day the Holy Spirit said to me, walked into my room and said to me, Joseph, stop praying like that. Why will you want to be Moses? He says, for you to be Moses simply means I have to take this generation back to Egypt. Is that what you want? And then you will be the deliverer bringing them, uh, bringing them out. Is that what you want? Ah, I said, no, no, no. So I stopped praying that way. Make me who you have called me to me. I'm not praying. God, don't make me like Paul. Because God has a better ministry for you. The Bible says, without us, they will not be made perfect. So we are the one closing the chapter and you want to be. Listen to me. Who is the one that people shout, I mean, you know, applaud the most? The man who started the race, let's say, you know, relay race. You know, relay race. Is it the man who started the race or the man who ended it? No, it's the person who ended it. Because that's the person, if he didn't end it, that group won't win. So that's why the Bible says Paul, Moses, Abraham, the rest of them, listen to me, they're applauding us and saying, come on, come on, come on, because we are the last leg or the last lap, as they call it. We are the ones, to, you know, running to win that race. Am I communicating? So without us, they are not made perfect. Thank God for the ministry of Paul. Thank God for the ministry of Peter. But ours is better. God reserved us for the last. Amen. You reserve the best for the last. Is that not so? You don't reserve the best for the first. No, you reserve the best for the last. Because you want to win well. Am I communicating? Praise the Lord. Alright, so, but we all with open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from what? Glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, which means the Holy Spirit is the one who is doing a work, getting us to be changed from one level of glory to another level of glory. And when they say from glory to glory, it doesn't mean two glories. It simply means there is exceeding that glory. There are dimensions of glory, which means if we are to understand what he's saying, he's saying that from one image of glory to another image of glory to another image of glory to another image of glory, to another image of glory until we become Christ himself. When you walk by, people can say, this is Jesus. But until you get there, we still need to be changed. Transformation needs to happen. Am I communicating? Alright, having read that, let's go to chapter 4 now and read verse 1. Just try to lay this foundation here. We are foreseen, we have this ministry. So what ministry do you think he's talking about? The ministry of glory. Or better glory. Or exceeding glory. Hallelujah. That's the ministry he's referring to. He's not talking about his own ministry. He's saying we have in this ministry. Did you notice the word we? He didn't say I. Therefore seeing we, we, we have this ministry. As we have received what? Mercy. What did we receive through mercy? The grace of God. The glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We faint not. Next, Let's read on till verse 7 now. But have denounced the hidden things of dishonesty. What are these hidden things of dishonesty? The law. Not walking in craftiness, 
or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. This also means walking straight, walking honestly, walking, you know, walking, walk, walking, not deceiving people, all right? Okay, let's read on. But if our gospel be heed, which means if the preaching of the gospel be heed, it is heed unto them that are unsaved or that are lost, which means people who are not saved. All right? Which means those who are lost, the reason why they are lost is because they, are, they have not received our gospel. Is that clear to you? Okay, so if our gospel be heed, it is heed unto them that are lost. Next verse, of whom or in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believed not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Next verse, for if we preach not our, sorry, for we, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Christ's sake. What are we preaching? The Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord. We are just his servant. So we are not preaching ourselves. That's not what we are here to do. For God, who commanded the light to shine, take note, not into, but out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the, of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Keep it there, please. He says, for God, who commanded the light to shine out, out of darkness. That's what happened in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. God didn't bring light into darkness. No. The light that brought transformation was already hidden in darkness. Oh, the Bible says in verse 2. Have you read that before? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. It says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You can also read it this way. It says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, the deep, the deep, the deep water. Deep water. It means the same. So we can also read it this way. And the Spirit of God, oh, sorry, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. So both the darkness... And the Holy Spirit, we already saw earlier, he said, now the Lord is that spirit. Is the evidence of God's glory. That when anybody has an encounter or you have the, the Holy Spirit in you, then the glory of God is in you. Am I communicating? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what did God do? God didn't call light from anywhere. Light was already in existence. It's called the Holy Spirit. He was brooding over the waters, the darkness, the deep. He was also there. And so when God said, let there be light, the light actually came out of darkness to shine. And that's the way God does his work in us. And God wants to change your life. He doesn't change it from outside. He changes it from inside. It's the same pattern. When God wants to transform a man's life, he does it from inside. Why? He resides inside. God doesn't reside in my head. He doesn't reside outside. He lives in me. If you are a child of God, he does that work. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Okay. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had what? Shined in our hearts. And the primary reason why that is happening is to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. To give what? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus. Another translation reads this way. To give the light of the knowledge of God. Of the glory of God. Of the knowledge. Okay, let me go back again. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. Should actually read in the person of Jesus. Because he's not talking about the face of Jesus. He's only telling you that Jesus is the person. He's the carrier of the glory of God. So when you have Jesus, you carry the glory of God. Amen. And that glory is better than the glory that Moses saw. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, we now come to the, our theme now in verse 7. But we, having this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Stop there. It says, but we 
have this treasure. So what treasure is he talking about? We go back again to verse 6. Can you give me verse 6 again? Because that's the treasure he's talking about. He says, we carry this treasure in earthen vessel, which means we carry, when he talks about earthen vessel, which means we of clay, made of clay, made from the earth. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Okay, man was formed from the dust of the earth. I'm sure you know that. Yes, sir. That's why we bury. When you bury, the body goes back, decayed, the spirit departs, of course, before that happens, the spirit departs and goes back to God. Or if he's born again, okay? We are not going to touch unbelievers. We are touching believers. So when a believer dies, his spirit departs, goes to God. Right? His body is buried, it decays. Praise the Lord. Now, so that's what happens. Now, but let's look at it again. What is this treasure that the Bible says... We, we have in earthen vessels. It is clear that he's talking about the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the person of Jesus. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the what? Face in the person of Jesus. Which means what is he talking about? In simple term, it simply means glory. What do you carry? The glory of God. In the person of Jesus. Jesus is the effulgence of God's glory. Is the full manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, so we need to understand that... Um, Every one of us or every person that is born again, you carry the glory of God. Praise the Lord. And that is the glory that is hidden in our earthen vessel, in our body. All right? The glory of God is in our spirit. We carry it there everywhere you go to. But it's about Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, which means Jesus is... is, is is what we have in this earthen vessel. You take Jesus away, we are nothing. If there's no Jesus in you, there's no redemption. Our redemption is assured because of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever will be tomorrow is because of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever you are now and whatsoever you will ever be by God, it will come from the reservoir of the glory of God that is in you. Am I communicating? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, but did you take note that he was um, very careful to talk about the knowledge, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In other words, even though Jesus is the glory of God, the other thing we must come to do is to have the knowledge of this glory. Because the more you know this knowledge, the more you get to know about the glory of God, the person of Jesus Christ in you, and what he represents, the better you become as a child of God. Amen. You remember earlier I said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid unto them that are lost, of whom the God of this world had blinded what? Their minds, lest they will see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in other words, the way the devil is defeated in the life, no, or defeated, you know, by God, is through light. Hallelujah. It's not through his power. The power of God is contained in his light. Hallelujah. So while the devil was having a field day in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, when light came, everything changed. Now what is he saying? He is saying to us that as long as you can be a Christian that is after the light of God, then the potential or the reality of what you carry inside will be Reveal to you and then you can walk in the victory that you have in Christ. Because you cannot rise above the level of knowledge that you have. You can't. You can wish it. But it doesn't come by wishing. It comes by you knowing it. If you don't know it, 
you can't function in it. You know, one of the things I've discovered is that this kingdom is called the kingdom of light. Give me Colossians quickly. Let me establish that. Colossians chapter 1. Give me verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. And let's look at, look at it together. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us fit to be what? Partakers of the inheritance of what? Saints where? Light. Another translation says in the light. So your inheritance is based on light. Hallelujah. All right? When the choir ministered a while ago, my sister quoted a scripture uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath, not who will, who hath, not who will, who hath, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now that is one knowledge. You see, he said we have been blessed. But you say, well, how come I don't have it? Because you just need to read on. Then you will find that Paul got to a point in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. He said, after we heard of your faith, you know, in the Lord Jesus, talking about the church in Ephesus. And your love, we cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in our prayer, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being that you may... What do I need to know? These blessings that he mentioned that I have been given to you. Oh, it's like somebody paying, a, a, a paying money into your account, but you didn't get an alert. And the person tells, you know, the person tells you, I, I, I paid a million naira into your account. You say, I've not seen it. Is it there? If that person is a person of integrity, and he says, I have paid a million naira, it is true. But you see, there's a tendency for you to be doubting. Because, ah, am I sure this person has paid money? Today is Saturday. Okay, maybe bank is not open today. I'll wait till Monday. Maybe Monday I'll quickly. You see, even so, throughout this weekend, you are doubting. In your mind, you are saying, I will have to go to the bank. I need to go and check it. Let me go and check. Let me, I, I will need to check. I, I, I will need to check. I, I will need to check. Just to be sure if it is so. My, right? Now, but is that money there? Now. The other way I want you to see it, you can also receive an alert in that account. But if you need that cash, you will have to get to the bank. Is that not so? Yes. Praise the Lord. But is that money in that account? Yes. Yeah. So when he says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, it's there. But how do I withdraw it? Knowledge. How do I withdraw it? Knowledge. Because if you don't know, you can't. Do you understand me now? So this kingdom is called the kingdom of light. That's why Paul will pray for them that God will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. The Amplified says your, the eyes of your mind being flooded with light so that you'll be able to see. Hallelujah. Alright, so back to our scripture where we are looking at, that is in verse 7 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So it says we have these uh, in, in, in this treasure, what treasure is that now? We have discovered is what? The riches of God. I said that earlier. Treasure simply means riches. So we can actually read it this way, but we have these riches in earthen vessels. What riches is he talking about? Naira and dollar? No. He's talking about the riches of God. And I'm going to show you one or two today. So that you understand these riches that we have in the glory of God. But you remember, I told you the way to access it is through knowledge. How many of you know that you are very rich? God has lavishly, has lavished you with all that he has. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Give me verse 17 and 18. Look at it with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. 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 Amahikistoya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, look at it with me. He said, therefore, if any man be where? In the glory. Oh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hi, many scriptures are coming to me. Okay, let me stay here. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, I like the word therefore. Therefore changes whatsoever he was talking about before now. We may know people in the flesh because he was talking about. From now on, we do not know any man after the flesh. Don't relate with people after the flesh. He's a Yoruba man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ah. Yes, he may be born again, oh. But people from the east, I can't trust them. I can't trust an Igbo man. Hmm. Igbo people, no, no, no. Now, as long as you carry that mentality, you have fallen from the place of glory because you don't have knowledge. How many of you know that God doesn't look at you as a man from Borunu? Okay? He doesn't look at you as somebody with Yoruba lady. No, God doesn't think like that. If not, God will be speaking Yoruba to you. <laughs> God will be partial, but which language does God speak? Hello? Hello? You know some people think God speaks Hebrew. Huh? You think Hebrew is what God speaks? No. What language does he speak? Thank you. God speaks spirit. He speaks his word. The language of God is supernatural, is spiritual. So when we hear God, that's why God formed us. God didn't form anybody. That's why the Bible says there's no Jew. There's no Gentile. There's no free. There's no bond. When it comes to Christ, there's no male. Oh, there's no female. Listen to me. In Christ Jesus, Jesus does not relate with us as, this one is a female. This one is a male. No, it is when it comes to your body that certain scriptures are, relate, are, are written if you are married. Hello. A lady that is not married cannot walk based on Ephesians chapter 6. And says, well, the Bible says I should submit to my husband. Who are you married to? <laughs> so who do you want to submit to? Ha, ah, you get that? Now, but if you are married, if you, if you are into the contract of marriage, okay, okay, then the Bible encourages you to. Now, if I am not married as a guy, who am I supposed to love? <laughs> but if I'm married, then in that respect of marriage contract, the Bible encourages me to love my wife. And then the Bible says my wife should submit to me. And you know some people think to submit and to love, what does it mean? Both of them means the same. If a woman is submitting, is practicing love. If a man loves his wife, he's also practicing the love of God. That's why I tell people, when it comes to marriage, you can't use emotion to practice the word of God. The love that God is talking about there is not emotional love. He's talking about the love of God. He said we should love, love the church. He said the same way Christ loves the church. How did he love the church? Before the church will even repent, Jesus died. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. And then the Bible says he washes the church. How? By the washing of the water, by the word. How many times has the church failed him? And Jesus never said, I am tired with the church. God. Eliminate them. Have you ever seen God? Jesus said so. No. He keeps bearing with us. He said, Father, don't worry. It will get better. And he speaks. Have you noticed that every time Jesus speaks to us, he has never spoken derogatory words to us. He tells you the love. That's what a man should practice to his wife. The worst your wife is just keep loving and keep pouring words of love. Pastor, you don't know my wife who... A man will tell me that. He said, ah, Pastor, you don't know my wife. The more you say that, in the more, ah, ah, ah. I say you have not practiced the word. You see, you are, you are interpreting what Jesus, that's what he does to his church. And that's how he makes his church better. Because the Bible says he's coming for a church without spots and without wrinkles. By the washing of the water, by the word. By the washing of the water, by the word. 
by the washing of the water by the word. Which means the man has more to do than even the woman. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the word of God is our standard. How many of you notice that the scripture is not written to favor anybody? Because if that scripture, if scripture was written by a natural man, he will have omitted that part that says, love your wife. If it were written by a typical woman, he'll have just removed that part that says, submit to thy husband. If it was written by children, ah, 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 honor thy father and thy mother. Mm -hmm. That's why you know that the scripture is not written by man. It's written by the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. All right, so if any man be in Christ, what is he? He's a new creature. I like that translation. So I say he's a new species. Another one says he has just started existing. How old are you? I know some of you will look at your flesh. No, we don't know any man after the flesh. So don't tell me about, I'm not saying don't celebrate your birthday. I'm going to be 60 soon in three years time, 60. No, but, but I'm not, that is, is good. You know, we celebrate so much of the flesh, but we don't think about our spirit. I should be celebrating my spiritual birthday. Because how, when did I start existing? 57 years ago? No. As far as God is concerned, my existence began when I got saved. How many years is that? I got saved? 1982, November 27, 1982. So that's how old I am. A little above 40. Praise the Lord. Is that okay? Now that's how old I am. So if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All things, watch, are, and behold, what? All things are now become now. Question, is this saying that everything in your life has passed away, therefore everything has become new? No, you know that's not it. Because if you were light complexion and you gave your life to Jesus, you won't become um, dark complexion. No. If you had bald head and you gave your life to Jesus, automatically that won't disappear. If you're a lady and you gave your life to Jesus, you won't become a man. Right? Now, so that's not what he's talking about. What is he talking about? He's talking about what happened in our spirit. And he says, everything that has happened in our spirit, now listen to me, is now of God. Which means God injected our spirit with brand new things. What are those things? That's what we want to discover. Because those are the vessels of glory. By the glory of God coming into us, Jesus Christ is the glory of God. I've said that already. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, what is he talking about? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. Let me, let's look at that. That scripture keeps coming back to me. Ephesians chapter 3. Give me verse 1 to 5. Ephesians chapter 3. Or I read from verse 1 to 10 quickly. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Next verse. If ye have heard of the dispensation of what? Of the grace of God. What is dispensation? Oh, there are different dispensations. There's the dispensation of innocence. That's before Adam fell. Everything he did, nothing was wrong. There was nothing wrong with Adam until he sinned. It was after he sinned that now everything now became wrong. But before then, God didn't have anything to judge. There was no wrong. Because he didn't know wrong. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so if you have heard of the dispensation, we are in the dispensation of grace. There was also a dispensation of the law. But we have left that dispensation. We are now in the dispensation of grace. All right? Of the, of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you, word. Next verse, please. How that, ye, how that by revelation, take note of the word revelation, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. By revelation. What is revelation? Light. Whereby, when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of who? What is the mystery of Christ? The glory of God. That man 
now inhabits or that God inhabits man. That's the mystery of Christ. That's the simple, that's the simple definition. Am I, am I communicating? That God is living in human beings. That's the mystery. Which in other ages were not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Let's read on. That the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of what? His promise in Christ by the gospel. Next verse. Whereof I was made what? A minister according to the gift of the grace of God, which, I mean, grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Mm -hmm. Unto me, whom I am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given that I should what? Preach among the Gentiles. What? 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 The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is the unsearchable? That's what we are still talking about. It's still the glory of God unsearchable riches. Now, so there are riches that are unsearchable. What are these riches? Now, these riches, like we said, they are not naira and dollars. It's not pounds. There's an investment of God in us. Or, permit me, in us through Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This investment of God is in Christ, and Christ is in us. Praise the Lord. So it talks about what? The unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. Why was he hid? It was not manifest. Christ was not manifested in the Old Testament. He didn't come. Nobody knew about it. It was a mystery until now it is revealed when Jesus died. Oh, even the people in the days of Jesus didn't understand the primary reason why he was there. Pastor Fumi quoted the scripture where Peter said no to the Lord. And what did he say no to? Jesus was talking about him going to the cross. He said, no, 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 you can't be doing that. No, no stop it. Because they didn't have understanding for the purpose for which Jesus came. They think Jesus came to be multiplying bread and fishes. So they said, Lord, we like that one. Just continue. Some thought, okay, just continue to raise the dead. We like you. No, that's not the reason why he was there or he came. He came primarily to redeem us from our sin. That's why he came. To not just to redeem us also, but to inject his glory. So that by us accepting him, the glory of God will become what we carry in this earthen vessel. Hallelujah. Amen. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10, finally. Verse 10, sir. To the intent that now unto principalities and past in heavenly places or realm might be known or be made known by the church. Let me read it again so that you can understand. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known. Might be known, if you like, that's what it means, which means to be revealed, to come into full manifestation by the church. Which means the church is supposed to be the revealer of these treasures that are embedded in Christ. Alright? By the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Now, what is the wisdom of God? Because that word manifold simply means the many-sided wisdom of God. You want to know the many-sided wisdom of God? I'll show them to you in another way. I'll read another scripture, then we tie those scriptures together. Is that okay? Yes, okay, what, are, what is the many-sided wisdom of God? Hallelujah. Okay, First Peter. Chapter 4. Uh, is it First Peter chapter 4 now? <laughs> Let me be sure. Glory to God. 
Yeah, First Peter chapter 4. Hmm. I think it's verse 10. First Peter chapter 4. Look at it with me. Now, you remember we just read how what? That the church will be the revealer of the many-sided wisdom of God. To who? Principalities and power. Who are we showing it to? God? No. God is the owner of the wisdom. So you can't be showing God. You are trying to prove to God. No. <laughs> There's nothing to prove to. Who are we? To show it to? Principalities and power. You say, why do we need to show it to principalities and power? Because principalities and power are in the place of disobedience, and God wants to make them more jealous. How did Satan fall? How many of you know the Bible calls him the anointed cherub that covered? That was an opportunity, a rare opportunity he lost. And so God said, okay. What happened? There was war in heaven. He was banished. He was thrown. How many of you know that God didn't get himself involved in that war? God didn't need to fight. God doesn't fight. Oh. He doesn't need to fight that kind of battle. Who fought? Michael and his angel. Who threw him out? Michael and his angel. Threw him to where? To the earth. Now, there was nobody in that earth then. So the Bible says, war are the inhabitants of the earth. That's what the Bible says. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Now, but there was no, Adam had not been created then, but that was when that war happened. That war happened not during the time of Adam. It happened far, 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 far before Adam ever was created. All right? Now, but there were creatures on the earth. Theologians will make us understand. Some of these creatures are what we, uh, scientists now, or archaeologists, are discovering call um, dinosaurs. Now, dinosaurs didn't exist during the time of Adam. If they did, then it would have been talked about. So when did they exist? They existed pre, pre, pre-Adamic creation. So they existed before Adam was ever created. That's what theologians said. I agree with them. Because when you look at scripture, see, there are many things... Um, well, that does not necessarily have anything to do with salvation. I think that's why the Holy Spirit didn't really take time to. But you see, every scientific discovery, especially archaeological discovery, is a fact that the world has been in existence longer than 6,000 or maybe over 6,000 years. Now, when scientists say um, the world has existed, sometimes they tell you over how many million, and I'm wondering how. Until I started doing this study, then I understood, okay, it's true. Because the world that Adam lived in was a restored earth. It wasn't a new world that God created. God only restored it from the old earth that was destroyed by the fall of Satan. When he was thrown, then darkness. You know, he was the cherub that covered it. What does that mean? Which means he was the one that stood before God and was covering God. He had that opportunity to cover God. He had a kingdom. He was a king also in his own respect. But he was an angel that, listen to me, was greatly, greatly feared because of the position he occupied. You know what? So when Adam, I mean, when Satan fell, that's when God thought of creating man. When man was created, man took the place of Lucifer. Lucifer was covering. You know what? We don't cover. We, he lives in. Hallelujah. We are carriers of God. So when you are in Obomosho, you are carrying God there. You are in your bathroom, God lives here. God doesn't say, mm, this place is smelly. No, he doesn't know anything like that. You understand what I'm saying? You travel abroad, you are carrying God. Hallelujah. You came here this morning, he's inside of you, he never left you. He didn't say, oh, this church, so let me come out of you and let me stand on the stage. No, 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 he's inside of you. The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I like the translation say, that says we are the shrine of God. If you are the shrine of God, witness God conducts his activity where? 
That's why if you listen to him, you will hear him say to you. Because he's there. Praise the Lord. Now, so when, 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 when Satan fell, he fell to the earth. The Bible says, woe are the inhabitants of the earth. That's what Revelation said. He didn't say, and there will be war. Excuse me, he said, there was war in heaven. How many of you know that Moses was the one who wrote Genesis? Exodus. Numbers. Leviticus. Deuteronomy. Now, but if you read it, it's amazing that even David, I mean, sorry, Moses wrote his death. <laughs> Isn't it funny that God will be telling you, you'll be writing your death and how you are going to die. Because he wrote Deuteronomy. Right? Yes, sir. So, which means he knew how all that was going to transpire. Because you see, he was speaking, writing by the Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit can always enable you to write even about, you know, things in the future. Now, the only thing is Moses didn't have understanding of what happened between Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. He didn't have that knowledge. Until you read Revelation. That's why you can't read only a verse of scripture and just conclude. No. You need to read the scripture. The scripture is total. There are some things you won't find clarity about them until you go to the Old Testament. Then it begins to shed light on what you saw. Or the New Testament sheds light on the old. If you want to understand the old, you need to come to the new. If you don't come to the new, you won't understand it. Like sacrifices that were happening, those sacrifices, yes, that happened in the Old Testament, are God is not expecting us to carry them out. But when you come to the new, you begin to understand those sacrifices. Because Jesus is a fulfillment of the law. He came to fulfill. He said, I didn't come to abolish it. I came to fulfill it. If he came to fulfill it, what does it mean? Which means we don't need the law anymore. Oh, he didn't come to abolish it. He came to fulfill it. Now that he has fulfilled it, do we need to fulfill it again? Thank you. But there are people who are still hitting on it. Hallelujah. No. The law of God is clear. One law he gave to us, love. If you love, you will obey God. If you love, you won't curse your neighbor. You, you won't hurt your neighbor. You won't, you understand? You, you just love God. You just love God. You love God, you, love, you will love humanity. You love humanity, you will love your wife. You, won't have, you understand what I'm saying? You love everything. You just love God. That's the only law in the New Testament. How many of you know that's the only law? Everything is encapsulated in love. Love God. Love humanity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So we read that. We read about the manifold wisdom of God. And I'm trying to show you what is the manifold wisdom of God. Because it says we will show to principalities. And I'm telling you now that we are showing. Do you know the devil is biting his finger? And you know what? You know why God has decided to keep us in this earth for a while? So that we will really show the devil. His punishment started now. It didn't start. No, it won't start when, you know, in the lake of fire. It started with us. We are the one dealing with him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We are the one showing him what he didn't, what he's losing. Praise the Lord. In the words of uh, David, he said, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him. He said, you have made him a little lower than yourself. Elohim. Praise the Lord. All right. So, we discovered the many, full, many, many sided wisdom, right? Now, I didn't talk about them, but let's look at this. Then we'll discover, then we we'll compare. As every man had received the grace, even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So, it talks about manifold wisdom of God. Now, it's talking about the manifold grace of God. Now, what does that mean? Again, manifold simply means many-sided grace. But the many-sided grace and the many-sided wisdom of God, you can connect them together. 
which came to us by Jesus Christ. So, which means now that we have Jesus Christ, you remember we talked about the unsearchable riches of Christ, which is the glory of God. Am I communicating? And through it, we begin to unveil the package that is in Christ. I hope, do you, how many of you understand what I'm teaching so far? Hello? I don't want to bring confusion. How many of you understand? How many of you are confused about what I'm teaching? Okay, fine. It's good. Because understanding is what we need, not, not confusion. All right, so, the manifold wisdom of God and the manifold grace of God. Now, what is the manifold wisdom of God? The manifold wisdom of God, for us to understand it, that's why we're going to the manifold grace of God. Now, when the Bible talks about the manifold grace of God, what is it talking about? Romans chapter 12. Are you in Romans chapter 12? Look at verse 1 with me. We'll read it till maybe verse, um, maybe verse 10. Interesting scripture. Romans chapter 12, I begin to read, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, or bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Which one is the most reasonable service to God? Ushering people? No, this one. Which means you can't be an usher that will be accepted by God. I cannot give my offering if I have not submitted my body. The first thing God expects from us is not doing something for others. He is forced to submit my body to him. You know why? Because if my body is not submitted to him, I will not be obedient to the spirit of Christ. How many of you have been tapped before? You know you should wake up and pray. And say, Lord, let me just sleep a little. Uh, why is it at the end of the day you wake up and discover you were not able to do that prayer? Then you begin to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, why are you sorry? Your body. What's wrong with your body? It's not presented to God. If it were presented to God, immediately said that your obedience will be complete. So, we have problem in obeying God because of what? Our flesh. Our body is the major issue. It's the major issue. Hallelujah. Amen. So how do we present? He said, so what do we do? We present our body. How do you present your body? Verse 2 tells you. Because verse two, 2 is the key to verse 1. Which means you can't present your body just by saying it. Father, I present my body to you now. Lord, take me all in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a lie. After from there. Your body will still be looking at some things. And you'll be saying, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lord, let me just indulge a little, a little, a little. Am I the only one that goes through that? I know all of you in this church, nobody has problem with. <laughs> Have you been to church before? You know you should give an amount. You tell yourself, Kai, you know this week. To even get cash now from the bank is trouble. So God, you need to understand. How many of you have been there before? Okay, because, uh, okay, okay. I thought I'm the only one. Okay, all right. Now, what is preventing you? Your flesh. Paul writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27. He said, I put my body under. Lest I become disqualified after I've preached to others. So I bring it under subjection. I crucify it. How do you crucify your body? You see, some people are waiting to go to a cross that they will nail their body to. No, that's not what he's expecting. Jesus said, carry your cross how many times? Daily. Daily is a daily thing. It's a daily thing. So even after you have, you have uh, presented your body last night or yesterday, it doesn't mean today you shouldn't present. You represent it. That's why dedication and rededication and consecration is a daily thing we do. That is one prayer that will never go out of place. We keep praying it. Lord, I dedicate myself. Before I came this morning, I did that. In the evening, I will do it again. Every time. You, because you are representing him. How can you represent the one who you have not presented your body to? You will misrepresent him. Is that not so? Now, a, 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 an ambassador... That is sent to represent, or let me put it this way. If the vice president goes to represent 
his principal, which means the president. And he does not speak the mind of the president. Will he be welcome well? So he must understand. Oh God, what do you want to tell them? Can I sit with you? I just need to know what is in your about this meeting since you can't go. Is that not so? Yes, mm. If the vice president goes and says, don't worry. I am telling you that we are declaring public holiday tomorrow in the whole of... <laughs> I'm sure you know what will happen. A deputy cannot de know the mind of the principal before you go. And you know what? I learned that you cannot represent a principal you don't know. Who is our principal? Jesus. You must know him. So that you don't want to be blabbing. Oh, if you are going to see miracle in your life, represent him. Because the Bible says, he walking with them, confirming the word. They were speaking his word, so he was confirming it. It is so easy for Jesus to do miracle in your life or use you to do miracle when you represent him. But when you go and blab your own, he will say, ah, this is not me speaking. He sent his disciples. The Bible says they went everywhere they went. Says, As you go, preach the gospel. Preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Heal the leper. Cleanse the leper. Sorry. You know, raise the dead and so on and so forth. Did you notice that they came back and said, hey, even your, even demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus said, mm -mm 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 -mm. that's not what I mean. I don't want you to rejoice in that. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, what were they saying? They came back and said, hi, Jesus. If you see the miracles we saw, eh? why did that miracle happen? He sent them. They represented him. When you represent God, God will back you up. When you don't, you don't see him. You are not supposed to live your life. Whose life are you supposed to live? His life. So you are more interested in serving him and pleasing him. Then he will work for you. All right. God said to me, he said, don't pray for miracle, represent me. He said, <laughs> he said, don't pray for miracle. Stop praying for miracle. I want to do miracle, but represent me. I said, okay, fine. Lord, I'll represent you. So how do we represent him? Present your body is one of the things you do. Now, but I said you can't present your body, all right, to God, acceptable, perfect will of God. And I mean, sorry, uh, except you go to fast two. Verse two says, and be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transform. That's the name of your church, metamorphosis. Now, which means transformation need to happen for you to be able to present. It is to the, to, the, to the level or to the realm or the dimension to which your mind is renewed. To that level, you can submit your body. You want me to say something? Now, how many of you know there are Christians, born again children of God, that still drink? Hello? Huh? That have problem drinking. They do it all once in a while. You don't think so? Now, that you don't have that problem doesn't mean you have your own. There are things you are dealing with. This flesh, okay? So, somebody who has problem, uh, you know, in certain areas, those things are still there. You have, uh, how do I say, train your body in that even before you became born again. How many of you know that when you get born again, your body is not born again? Is your body born again? No. So, if somebody used to, there are some people who they will still have problem. They may not have it immediately. I remember a brother who came to me and said, Pastor, I still have issues with women. Oh. And I said, as truthful as you are to me, it's a good thing that you are telling me. Because that's one way to help yourself. If you hide it, we won't know. We just say, yeah, he's a good brother. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And he's a good brother, but he told me. So I said to him, I encourage you to do something. Be ready to renew your mind, hearing the word of God. So I told him, I said, can you be coming to church? Don't miss any service. Make sure you hear the word of God. And when you hear it, uh, uh, 
uh, stay with it, hear that word over and over again to the extent that you want to renew your mind, endeavor to do the word of God because that's how my renewal comes. So he said, okay, now you come. Three months later, the same guy walked up to me and said, Pastor, <laughs> do you know that I don't know when that ceased from my life? That I don't think about, he said, it's not an issue for me. And he was being honest. How did that happen? The word of God. You see, the issue is people are trying to bring change, not going through the vehicle that God says we should go through. So you begin to do New Year resolution. This year, I'm not going to drink at all. You are deceiving yourself. It is flesh. This body. Hey, hey, hey. This body cannot just be tamed by, by resolution. It can only be tamed by the word of God. Do you get what I'm saying? So we need the word of God. So renewal of mind, as you get renewed, as your mind gets renewed, then the Bible says you'll be able to know, you'll be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What does that mean? Which means you'll be able to know what is the right thing to do part time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you know there are believers that still have problem lying? There are. I've met some of them. I was there. When I got saved, it didn't mean that everything I was saying was true. I had to work on that. By the help of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Praise the Lord. I know some Christians, when they tell you, I know a pastor, if he tells you good morning, check your time. Good morning. I mean a pastor. And he said, See, he will use one light to cover another light to use another light. And it just continues like that and continues. You see, how come he doesn't know? Because the Bible says you can see your conscience. You can get to a point where your conscience will be pricking you. You won't pick it anymore. You won't be sorry. It's a life somebody can go into. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now, so I said all that just to make you understand that so we can renew our mind. Praise the Lord. Let's read on because I'm looking at my time. Wow. Yeesh. For I say through the grace given unto me, so he's speaking how? Through the grace of God given unto him to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think how? How do you think soberly? According to the grace of God that is upon you, that's how you are supposed to think. What has God enabled you to do? Think that way. How many of you know that if the devil thought and said, I am the anointed cherub that covered it, I, I am the anointed cherub that covered it. That will not be pride. God does not consider that pride. That is his calling. That's what he's called to do. But when he said, I will ascend above the throne of God, he was thinking it. God said, okay, we are bringing you down now. What does that mean? Which means, humility is to accept your place in grace. They have made you a pastor in this church. Then people now say, ah, pastor, so, 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 so. I say, no, no, please, leave. Hey, hey. No, see, I'm just a servant, though. I'm just a servant. You think that's humility? No, that is pride. Because by grace, you have made it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So that you don't belittle what God has made you. They say servant of God. You say, mm. ah, no, 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 no. Me, I'm servant of men. No. It's like you say, somebody saying, you are a child of God. You say, no, no, I am a slave of God. No, it's to accept your place how? In grace, okay? So we shouldn't think more highly than we ought to think, but to think how soberly, according as God had dealt to every man how? A measure of faith. What faith is he talking about? We talked about that yesterday, but he's talking about a different kind of faith, which means faith for what you are called to do. Next verse. Let's read on because of time. For as we have how many members in one body, and all members have not what? The same office or function. Next verse. So we be many, are one body in Christ, and every one member, one of another 
of another. Sorry. Next verse. I'll read on. Having then what? Take note of the word gifts. Differing according to what? Now, you remember we read earlier about the manifold grace of God. Now he's revealing this grace to us, which has to do with gifts. These are the treasures. The treasure is the glory of God. The treasures are the riches of Christ in his glory. Do you get that now? What are these riches of Christ embedded in Christ? This is what we are discovering now. Manifold wisdom, manifold what? Grace. What is the grace? We are looking at it. Having then gifts, plural. Differing, the word differing simply means different kind of gifts according to what? Grace. Which means if there are different kinds of gifts, there are also different kinds of Grace, which means the understanding we need to have here is the manifold grace of God can also mean the manifold gifts of Christ. Do you understand me? Okay, so grace that is given to us with that prophecy. Now he's, he's now trying to enumerate them. One, it could be prophecy. So if your own grace and gift, gift is prophecy with a grace on it, then he says you should prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Next verse. I remember we dealt with this scripture the other time I came. Or oh, ministry. What is ministry? Service. What is service? Now, he didn't specify any particular one. Which means every other service can come under it. If you are an usher, that is service. If you are a sanctuary keeper, that is service. If you are protocol, that is service. Oh, anything that we do in the body of Christ. So he's now listing them under ministry, service. Let us wait on our ministry or our service, which means wait on it. To wait on it doesn't mean not doing anything. It simply means be involved in it. Praise the Lord. Or he that what? Teach it. That's another gift of grace. What did he say you should do? Teach. Next verse. Look at it. Or he that exalted on what? That's another gift. Or he that giveth. Let him do it with. Now, this is not what we do after service. We say, okay, let's give our, or after preaching. We say, okay, let's give our offering. No, it's not everybody that is there. There are specific people who are called to be here. These people can give and give and give. Things may be tough in the house. They will still be giving. This is a, is a calling. The same way he talked about somebody who has ministry. That's the same way these people are. These are people who are called by God to support the gospel and the brethren. That's their calling. They enjoy it. If they have not given, they are not satisfied. For example, you could say mine could be teaching, for example, one of it, teaching. Now, I enjoy teaching. I don't teach to make money. I just like it. When people sit to listen to me, when I hate people being ignorant, I hate it. If I sit with people who are ignorant about God and the things of God, ah, it infuriates me. But I am my best when I'm teaching people. Because... I just enjoy it. Now, so you discover that this gift now is not to make money. It is what you are using to serve others in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there are those who are givers. These are not, do you understand what I mean now? It's a ministry. It's a gift of Christ. And there's grace on them. Praise the Lord. Okay, so he that give it, let him do it with what? Simplicity. They don't see. They are not people who are out and say, eh, "Hello, Pastor Fumi, I, I want to say something to the church." Um, the next place we are moving to, I am going to pay two years' rent. No, they don't talk. They will do it quietly. If Pastor Fumi say he wants to say, I beg, please, please, I beg you. Don't, don't mention my name. 
That's the attitude. Do you understand? They are quiet givers. They are dangerous givers, but they are quiet. It is not in the amount they give. It is the way they give. You will go to their house. You'll be surprised. You look at the food they are eating. You say, and this man is giving all this money. Why won't you take time to feed this church, this home? If you don't have this ministry, you will take care of your people. So when they are asking for money, you say, it is after you have taken care of your people, you will think of it. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, it's not, it, you are not wrong. It's just that it's not a calling for you. If it's a calling, you will do it. Okay, then he talked about another kind. He that showeth what? Mercy with what? It's another kind of gift of grace. Showing mercy. It's not everybody that has it. People who have this, majority of them operate in the area, some of them, okay, let me not say majority of them. Most of them operate in the area of taking care of people. There are people who are nurses in hospital, but they are not come. Have you been there before? They see a pregnant, sit down there. Am I the one that impregnated you? <laughs> Have you met those kind of nurses before? But when you see somebody who carries this, you will see the person. The way he will receive you, make the place comfortable for you. They want to inject you. See the way they will be talking to you. That's a calling. It's not everybody that has it. How do they, she said they should show it with cheerfulness. They are just joyful doing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me stop there today. You can read the rest for yourself. Now, but you see these, some of these things we have read. Let's go quickly. I still have three minutes. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read, if you're there, from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, I read quickly to verse 11. We just read through. Look at what it says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk what? Worthy of what? What is vocation? Okay. Vocation can be calling. But we have vocational schools. Or what we call technical training school. Vocation is where you are trained. Mostly in handiwork. Is that not so? Now, so what is he saying? We can read it this way. Walk ye worthy of the handiwork that you are trained or called to. Now, so what is your handiwork in the body of Christ? We name some of them. But there are more we are going to see now. All right? So he's talking about vocation, whereby you are called. Next verse, please, quickly, quickly, quickly. With all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. This is what you need to exercise because you are meeting many people, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There's nobody that is more important than the other. Well, but we need to operate in unity. We need to forbear. Am I communicating? If not, somebody will anger you. The person who is supposed to sweep has not come to sweep. And just by the time we are setting up, then the person says he wants to come and sweep. It can get you angry. So we bear with the person. Hallelujah. It is after people have finished sitting that the usher now walked in. And said, no, no, no. You are not so, you, you, let me arrange you people. Well, we bear with them. Okay. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Next verse. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yes. One God, one Father of all who is Above all, and through all, and in you all. Next verse. But to every one of us is given what? That word grace comes out again. To every one of us is given the same grace? No. When he says to every one of us is given grace, which means we have diverse grace. Mindful grace. Which is also the manifold wisdom of God. I will explain that towards the end. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, praise God. So to every one of us is given what? Grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. So the grace on Pastor Fumi is according to what? The gift of Christ. The grace on Pastor Rotimi is according to the grace of Christ. So the, your grace and her grace is not the same. 
Because you see, according to the grace was given based on the measure of the gift. God measured the gift. He was the one who determined what gift should come to who or shouldn't come to who. Do you understand me? So if you understand that, you will appreciate yourself. You will like yourself. You say, thank God, I am not Pastor Fumi. And don't expect to preach like Pastor Fumi. You say, Pastor Fumi likes to teach like this. No, you are not supposed to be like that. You are not Pastor Fumi. There's only one Pastor Fumi. And all in, you know, in the entire globe, there will be only one Pastor Fumi. Even if we have other people who bears Fumi and their name is also Pastor, they won't behave like that. Praise the Lord. That is the, the, that is the understanding we need to have about these treasures that we carry in earthen vessels. That the excellency might be of him, the power, not of us. The excellency of his power might be of God. You see, in the midst of it, even me up to now, I still wonder, God, you mean you can use somebody like me? No, I'm never comfortable in this regalia. Never. That's why I always trust him. God, you have to help me today. You have to help me today. You know, if it were me, I would be comfortable in me. But because it is the gift of Christ, I will always look up to him. So to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Next verse. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Next verse. Now he, now, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth and did what? He that descended is the same that also ascended up above all heavens that he might what? Fill all things or fulfill everything. And he gave some. Now, you remember he talks about the gifts. He said he has given some these gifts. Now, he's enumerating five, but there are more than five. This is the scripture that confuses many of us. We already read in Romans chapter 12. He mentioned names. We didn't see apostles there. We didn't see evangelists there. We didn't see pastor there. We didn't see teacher there. But he mentioned, oh, we saw teaching. We saw teaching. Hmm? He that teaching. We saw prophecy, not prophet. Huh? Now. Here, he's expatiating it. Listen to me. You need to, it's the same thought. He's not saying the only ministry that Jesus gave to his church is five. No, there are more than that. Oh, are you still with me? Yes, sir. Verse 8 again, or verse 10. I think it's verse, verse for the scripture. No, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back. I want to show you something. Then I'll, I'm through. Verse 8. Okay. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity what? And he gave what? Take note of the word gifts. Unto who? Unto men. Now, so what are these gifts? Verse 11. Some of them, not all of them. Oh, he's not mentioning all the gifts. There are gifts that Paul didn't mention by the Spirit here. We are discovering them later. Hello? Hi. That's why you find that in Romans chapter 12, where we read, there's a place where he used the word ministry. Ministry covers a lot. And I told you, ministry simply means service. All right, so he gives some what? Apostles, some what? Prophets, some what? Evangelists, some what? Some what? If we are to read on and he was to enumerate them, he will continue. And he gives some, and he gives some, and he gives some, and he gives some. So there is not only apostle to teachers that he gave five. No, there are more. That's what I want you to understand. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? The only thing is these ones are the ones majorly that stands to teach or preach. But there are others that don't teach or preach. Like the person who is a giver. Who is called to stand in that ministry of giving. He doesn't come here to preach. He may not even know how to teach you on how to make money. He may not even be able to teach you on how to be a better giver. But it's his ministry. 
Did you get what I'm saying? So we have that. In the days of Paul, we didn't have a ministry of media. But we have it today. It's a ministry. And there are those who are equipped, anointed, and they are there. We didn't have people projecting scripture. Before, we'll be opening our Bibles. And that will delay time. Now we have it. So there are many other ministries that we have not discovered yet. That's why you see there are riches. Oh, hallelujah. If, if this place is a gold mine, how many of you know that the more you dig, the more you, you discover? The more you dig, the more you discover. The more you dig, the more you discover. So there are many things. What I want you to see is that those are the gifts or the manifold grace of God. Those are the treasures that are embedded in Christ. Am I communicating? And through his glory, we are discovering our own individual giftings. Okay? Now, I'll close by saying that you remember we read about the manifold wisdom of God. What is the manifold wisdom of God? I told you the manifold wisdom of God and the manifold grace of God actually are connected. They mean the same virtually. Why did I say so? If you want to see the manifold wisdom of God, bring every believer in the world together and see their diversity. Then you can appreciate God's wisdom. Because each one of us will carry a facet of God's wisdom. That's why God didn't make us the same. We are made differently. It is said that there are no two fingerprints that are the same. Am I communicating? They say the skull of the head, I think they said, the medical science, there are no two that are the same. Why? That is to tell you that God didn't make us. You can be identical twins, but you are not called the same thing. The same thing. We are different. That's why we must understand our originality and function. That's when you are a blessing to me, and I am a blessing to you. Am I communicating? That is when we are a blessing. So if you bring every believer, everybody that is born again in the world, bring them in the same room if you can, and let everybody begin to manifest what they have, you will wow God. You say, wow. God? Am I communicating? You are one of that investment. God's investment is in you. If you are born again, you have it. You may not have discovered it. You may not know it. You may not have known it. But it doesn't mean you, you are not God's investment. Or God's investment is in you. You just need to grow to where you discover it. If I should take it further, I will make you also understand that there's no one single person that has only one gift. You have more than one. So you are graced in many ways. You may not have discovered it. Sometimes... For some of us, it is pressure or situation that brings you to discover it. Example, Joseph didn't know he can interpret dream until the situation was created in the prison. Because he didn't interpret his dream in his father's house. It was his brothers who said, are you going to rule over us? He said, me, I don't know. You say, me and your mother, including your mother that is dead. You are saying we are going to, we are going to bow to you. Joseph didn't answer yes or no. Did you remember that? Did he interpret any dream in Potiphar's house? Huh? No. But in the prison, one day he woke up and discovered uh, his other inmates were sad. So he said, uh, what is wrong? And you know, these things happen even in church. Huh? You see somebody is, is looking, he's, you know, he's, he's not bright. And you are asking, how are you? You know what we know 